Alpha J, more like Alpha Gay. <laughs> Alpha J, more like Beta J. <laughs> Alpha J, more like, uh, well, he's a furry. <laughs> I know there are channels like Burleazy that have been roasting cartoon characters, but that friendly banter sort of interaction has been a big thing for me ever since middle school. I guess it just carried into my work here. Some people really like it, some people don't. It's here to stay, but I don't think I'll become the person to roast in every video. Just when it matters. Get a load of him, folks! He must have been born on a highway because that's where most accidents happen! A Spongebob episode dealing with roasts? Oh right, so I have many options to pick. We can tackle this episode versus Squidward, dealing with which episode dealt with the idea of a new being infiltrating the Krusty Krab through Spongebob's hand better, we can tackle this along abrasive side, an episode that had a meaner side of Spongebob, and see which episode dealt with that aspect a lot better. You have, as seen on TV, an episode where Spongebob gets really popular and it gets to his head, that can also be similar to this, but with his hand. Oh, and you have Karate Star, where we can compare said main characters getting out of hand, causing chaos around them. Oh man, I have so many episodes to choose from, but I gotta say, one episode prevailed because both of these episodes do the same thing in a sort of way. It's just one episode I really, really like, and the other episode I really, really do not like. <laughs> 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 People are proof that evolution can go in reverse! Well, while Squidward flosses Bubble Bass's cheeks, we get Spongebob using a lot of theatrics while cooking. It's a common theme in Krusty Krab-centered episodes, and I always appreciate it when it is so. I think this sequence is obviously one of the better ones. Krabs, of course, is only concerned with money, until he connects the theatrics of Spongebob cooking with the idea of making a bigger profit off of watching the chef cook. Now, originally, before watching this episode, I thought this was going to center around a hibachi chef, where it was more of the theatrics of Spongebob cooking, rather than, well, what we see to focus to be later. I'm glad I was wrong. I think this execution of Chef Bob is really good. So Mr. Krabs channels his inner sim and deletes the walls around him, making what he calls an open kitchen for the customers. In this episode, Krabs is actually pretty okay. There isn't that much exploitation, and this could have very well worked in the pre-movie days, when Krabs was much more of a parental guide than he is now. He explains this to SpongeBob, who in this episode has stage fright. Sometimes he does, sometimes he doesn't. In fact, in the other episode, he gets over his nervousness quite quickly when the audience warms up to him. Obviously, despite Krabs telling Spongebob that he's a natural-born performer, Spongebob hides in his new, spacious, and sanitary dressing room. Not sure why he'd need that, but it's the half-thought that counts. Spongebob, if you don't come out, you're fired! Question to you all, how do you like these new animated styles that are given to the characters? I haven't really talked about Spongebob that much or often, unlike earlier when I couldn't stop talking about the show, but considering that the only other time I talked about a relatively new Spongebob episode was in the last verses, I gotta say, sometimes it works, and sometimes they're swinging their budget for unnecessary animated steps. Functional will always be better than fashionable, and animation is a medium that works best with a purpose. Break a leg! Break two legs! My leg! Shut up, Fred! Yeah, you already got an episode for yourself. And you think you have a foot in the major character's race? You had your spot in the spotlight. Now go break your leg off camera. SpongeBob doesn't do a good job when he knows people are watching and I can relate. When family is over, it's much harder to record. You subconsciously think about when you flub your lines. You can sometimes under- <sighs> You can sometimes underplay dramatic moments because you're being listened to. And overall, it's like they're over your shoulder when they're not, directly anyway. This also brings back vibes of pickles, when Spongebob really couldn't get that order done correctly. Maybe it's just the fact that he has to put a shoe on the patty. But getting back to this, people really don't enjoy this performance, including an increasingly nervous Mr. Krabs, who places his stress upon the sponge, who hides under the stove because of course he does. What could he possibly do? Well, meet the true Chef Bob. <laughs> It leads me to those people who aren't necessarily the best on camera like yours truly. It's easier to know that the eyes are on the performer, even when it isn't yourself. Not to get extremely meta, but for my introverted self, it's much comfortable to do this than to get a webcam and do it that way. I think Spongebob both understands and enjoys, which is why this scene here where Spongebob is happy, entertaining, and making his boss proud, the crowd's eating it up, but also 
also focusing on the puppet. It makes me really understand why this latest season is so good. It could also be a way of explaining animation itself, considering that in many cases, we don't see the man or woman behind the voice in cartoons, just the voice. Well, let us begin in squirrel jokes. So only to satisfy the inner sponge fan in me, let's assume that this takes place within the week of Culture Shock, the other episode in pre-movie so far, that has the Krusty Krab revolve around events. Mr. Krabs, with no context before, is running a comedy event in what looks like a packed Krusty Krab. Although the comedian does fine, SpongeBob is up next. Have you ever noticed salt shakers? I mean, you fill them up every night at closing, and I mean, where does it all go? And tomatoes, what's the deal on those things? What are they, vegetables or fruit? <clears throat> and what does that make, ketchup? I think there is something about the jokes he tells that says something about his character. In pre-movie, it's simple. He loved his job, he loved his friends and pet, he loves the jellyfish, and really that's about it. So it would make sense for him to make jokes about his job, and for him and only him to laugh about it. It's like when you see people react to not saving things in Photoshop or something like that. You feel that, but if you didn't draw, you probably wouldn't have an experience or memory to go back to. So all I'm saying is, the joke is probably fine, but that that was the wrong crowd. Oh, brother, this guy stinks! I'm not taking this from you, Long Neck. Hey, hey, funny guy! I got a joke for you! What smells rotten and puts people to sleep? Um, not just gas? No! Your act! <laughs> <laughs> But you guys paid for it, so I don't understand why you're laughing. One thing I do enjoy about this episode is all of the facial expressions. There are a few moments within this where if you showed me a screen cap like months after so I forget if it's true or not, I may think it was a fan art and not necessarily a real face from the episode. Spongebob looks around for something or someone to make a witty observation from. So instead of choosing Patrick, who is booing him by the way, he picks Sandy, the squirrel. Did you ever notice how big squirrel's teeth are? <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Huh? I mean, hey, you could land a plane on those things. And what's up with that squirrel fur? I guess fleas need a home too. <laughs> so you're probably wondering, okay, Jay, you said one episode you liked and one episode you don't like. And clearly by the sound of how you're already talking about Chef Bob, you don't like squirrel jokes. How could you not like squirrel jokes? Two words, uncomfortable vibe. Someone's in the kitchen with Sandy, pressure, rodeo days. All of these episodes seem to have a problem with Sandy as a character. It's like she's isolated from everyone else, whether because she's not a sea animal or because she's not really friends with many characters. I know there is also Sunbleach that also suffers from the same problem of discrimination to some, but that doesn't really involve Sandy. But let me put this out there. This is the only pre-movie episode I don't like. Party pooper pants, dumped, I was a teenage Gary, I'm fine with. And if it was on, I'd watch it. As you can see, Spongebob in this episode is pretty mean to Sandy. That's not the problem though. It's not that the episode or vibes within the episode are mean mean-spirited. There are many mean-spirited episodes in Spongebob that I don't have a problem with, like Jellyfishing. That episode tore Squidward apart. I didn't really care because I had great comedy. It's also a cartoon character that was designed to get hurt, and he truly deserved it towards the end. Mean episodes, generally for me, weren't really an issue if it's done right. Those jokes are hurtful, and you know it. Come on, Sandy, I was just joking. I mean, everybody knows you're the smartest one in Bikini Bottom. Well, that's just a thing. I don't believe that to be true. The episode episode, nor the show, gives me enough confidence to believe that, and that's another problem. The reason Spongebob is such a special character is because of the way that he sees the world. It's different from the people around him. For example, he respects and appreciates Squidward a lot, considering him a friend, but anyone else would think, wow, Squidward really doesn't show that he cares for Spongebob, except in a few instances. So of course he sees Sandy in the best light and has good intentions when it comes to her. The problem I have is that not everyone in Bikini Bottom is like that. Other characters tear each other down, and Sandy always seemed to be in that department. And episodes like this, and someone's in the kitchen with Sandy, seem to prove it, well beyond any counter argument. It's like if you had two friends and one of them really loved to tear your other friend down, but it wasn't a joking matter, and it was about their characteristics. And every time it happened, people would laugh a little bit, but then it would get a little silent. You ever been in a situation like that? Because that's how I feel about this episode. <laughs> Guys, it's the stupid squirrel. I know, let's try and communicate with it. Duh. Duh. 
I want to like it, but I can't. It's off-putting. And I've never been the reviewer to lie for a review. Seems kind of dumb. We're talking about cartoons here. If I like a show or think that a show isn't as bad as people say, I'll say it. Even if I'm the only one in a room to believe so. Maybe you like squirrel jokes. Maybe you think I'm too sensitive. Maybe you think I'm looking too deep. You're completely justified in saying that, but it doesn't change how I feel when I see the episode. It's not comfortable to watch, it's off-putting, and if there was a change in atmosphere of the episode, I think it would be just fine. Anyway, to lighten the mood, let's get back to Chef Bob. Getting back to Chef Bob, we see a lot of people taking a liking to this new sensation. Plus, SpongeBob is doing a lot of tricks that people enjoy, even if it is to the indirect slight ridicule of Squidward. Oh, look at the time! I gotta get home and get my beauty sleep! Oh, what died on that guy's neck? Oh, it's his head! Hey, what died on your neck? Oh, it's your head! Oh. Don't stop there! Where did you get those pants? No, Navy? Trying to act all fancy with that kid's meal watch. What do you call a fish with no eyes? Your parents if they thought a combination between them would be better than this mess. But as you can see, Chef Bob becomes a roaster, as far as the TV Y7 rating will allow. The audience loves it initially anyway, as these stories tend to. No Hat for Pat is a great example of something working at the expense of someone else. Getting slightly ahead just spit ideas, but if you wanted to have your stock, Plankton tries to get the formula, it would have been funny to have him come in, get roasted and hurt, then leave because he's emotionally defeated. To anyone who's been watching Spongebob, if you want to know who's the best at roasting within the show, it's Plankton. Hey! You can't talk to my grandson like that! Someone ought to put you in a mental hospital! Someone should put you in a box floating down the river, Grandma! You're probably right. Squidward doesn't seem to enjoy plagiarism, and this will come back into play. But for now, it's a seat, and in retrospect, I actually enjoy that a lot, because it allows for a healthy balance between delayed and instant gratification. Lastly, SpongeBob doesn't seem to know why he or Chef Bob would say something so mean. As you can see, this episode takes a unique route, despite being similar to other episodes, hence why it was so hard to pick an episode. But unlike Goodbye Krabby Patty, an episode I heavily criticize for essentially being a Spongebob compilation being squeezed into your subpar Spongebob special, this episode is actually being unique, despite being a part of a show that has over a hundred episodes or something. Did, did I say that? I didn't say that! <laughs> No, 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 no. I got this. I got this. <clears throat> Firstly, if you touch Chef Bob like that again, I'm gonna have to call Chris Hansen so either he can arrest you or roast you so bad that McDonald's will have a restocking of ingredients for their fish fillet. Also, the fact that you want to get roasted by a puppet for everyone to laugh at you, combined with your outfit and the amount of excitement you're putting on moments like this, tells me that you live a very sad life. And if I were to meet the background characters of your life, they'd have triple the amount of excitement in their life than you. I'm sorry, I didn't get that. I don't speak Goober. Guilty as charged. Ha ha ha. The first time I saw this, I laughed so hard, because Spongebob doesn't do this type of comedy. Everything about this was perfect, from the over-the-top use of the prop, to the laughing, to the deadpan staring, to the tear. This may be up there when it comes to my favorite post-sequel moments. People enjoy it, even the people who get insulted to a degree. The only people who don't seem to enjoy it are Spongebob and, to an extent, Squidward. You may also notice that Mr. Krabs is not around, so you can see why this isn't a Krabs exploit Spongebob, and then gets what he deserves in the end sort of episode. It's actually simpler than that. But speaking of crabs... Sorry, Mr. Krabs. It's a list of things Chef Bob needs for his dressing room. No way! <laughs> What's the matter, crabs? You don't like money? What? Of course I like money! The office will be ready in five minutes! He's actually pretty vulnerable within this episode, which helps Spongebob's case, considering that he's already uncomfortable with Chef Bob's insults. This is one step closer to Spongebob's breaking point. Chef Bob actually also lashes out at Spongebob, his very first interaction with, well, himself. So far within the episode, you can see Chef Bob's arrogant behavior spiraling wildly out of control. I guess if there was one thing I can do to improve this episode, possibly the passage of time. Therefore, Chef Bob and 
insulting a lot of crowd members, but also being really successful over a larger period of time. Other than that, I think this is more than a solid episode. It's a really good episode. So let's get back over to Squirrel Jokes. So getting back to Squirrel Jokes, we have Spongebob headlining the show, and I gotta say, the progression of the story is up to quality with other pre-movie episodes. I definitely enjoy how they all retain that average day in Bikini Bottom feel, and rarely if ever feels like just another episode that they need to pad out the season. The Bikini Bottomites are truly excited to see Spongebob for the Squirrel Jokes. Sandy goes backstage and pushes again, hey Spongebob, let's try to use some different types of humor. Obviously he's not confident in his other jokes, but he says yes anyway. Patrick comes in and talks in a mocking way to Sandy, proving her point in front of Spongebob. I don't even blame the sponge, and I don't think he's a bad person within this episode. I've seen this episode done countless times. It's his role within the episode to go too far. I don't even think he was really being that mean, because again, to him and Sandy, they respect each other. Spongebob sees Sandy in the best intentions. Just think of it this way, if you watch episodes like this, Rodeo Days and Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy, I then want you to watch Texas, because that episode was the reverse of this episode. In that episode, they appreciate Sandy, and they show it. Episodes like this make that episode much more of an isolated case. It's the outlier, not the norm, and that's why it makes it that much harder to appreciate episodes like Texas. So Sandy really tries to push Spongebob into talking about other jokes, and reluctantly, he decides to make Sandy happy and do so. The important touch here is that Spongebob doesn't want to do squirrel jokes because he genuinely believes in what the jokes are, and that he genuinely believes that squirrels are stupid. It's that Spongebob wants to do squirrel jokes because he has no other material to do so. And Sandy, who'd be incredibly blind, would not care about the fact that everyone else would boo. Well, getting to this headline performance, we see that Spongebob does try out other humor, but it is clear what the audience came for. Hey! about this water? I mean, this stuff's everywhere. Tell the one about the squirrel and the light bulbs! They... Patrick is really hanging Spongebob out to dry in this episode. Like, wow, he should have plagiarized Squidward's culture shock performance. Put your fans together for... <laughs> People clearly don't like the new jokes, so he's stuck with a dilemma. And you know what he picks. Howdy, y'all! squirrel to screw in a light bulb because they're so darn stupid obviously spongebob doesn't understand sandy's side and sandy doesn't understand spongebob's side either and therefore things get raised to another level i gotta say if it were like mr krabs for example and they were making fun of mr krabs in this episode and it was krabs jokes not squirrel jokes considering that he's a species that we don't see too often as a background character i don't think i would have had a problem with it granted it was written well with him, I would feel like there is many angles to attack it without it feeling too uncomfortable. Maybe he takes the insults because the money is good, and he finally cracks and shuts down the show or something. At least with him, there isn't a someone's in the kitchen with crabs where the entire town yells at him for losing his shell. In fact, he was praised for doing so when he lost his shell. I hope you see where I'm going with this. Well, anyway, let's end Chef Bob before getting to the conclusion of this episode. Ending off Chef Bob, we get this scene here. Chef Bob, you stole my line. I do all the insults around here. Oh, I am so sorry, Squidward. You're absolutely right. Uh, thank you. It's, it's, it's really not such a big deal. In no way am I condoning plagiarism. I'd hate it if my roasts were taken by someone clearly inferior to the power. But this is like 95% of all of my confronting my hater moments. They come at me with anger, and I try to keep the energy calm. And they don't keep the same energy of being angry. And then we learned that some of the critiques of me weren't really an issue. You lost massive points for me, Squidward, but at the same time, you don't deserve what is about to happen to you. Which is Chef Bob embarrassing him. I was gonna ask Squidward how old he was, but then I remembered he can't go that high. This would be the breaking point of the sponge, causing him to speak out, which leads into a roasting scene that you saw in the beginning of this video. That is the scene that was going around lately while I was on Twitter, but there is actually one scene that outdoes that scene 2000%, and we'll get to that soon. So Chef Bob would continue by slapping Spongebob with a rubber chicken, which crosses the line. They'd have a fight, and this image here is hilarious. It's a unique fight that I believe only animation could do justice to, considering the fluid motions that make it worth watching, combined with the infinite ways of going about this without being affected by earthly limitations. It reaches a height after the spatula sword battle where this happens. Make customer 
customers! Uh-uh, your customers? More like your posture. Get your butt out of my face. No one stands like that. But uh, getting back to this, oh my god, that was brutal. And I love it. I think the audience reacted well. It had enough comedy, but it was also really dark. I'm not sure what this lies in terms of what people like more of in Spongebob, but I'm actually okay with this. But I'm also okay with Spongebob being innocent. We already have shows like Gumball, Teen Titans Go, and the like that can get really dark, and I'd be pretty okay with that. So when customers had enough, Krabs had enough. And thus, Chef Bob is out of here. <laughs> Huh, good thing Plankton wasn't being terrorized by Pearl, I mean Mr. Krabs. Ah, <sighs> the Spongebob community was really frantic about one course meal back in the day. But the episode ends with Spongebob's giant, misshapen, pulsing red hand that will haunt me. Oh, and this. Hi, everybody! Who's hungry? <laughs> Alright, roses are red, violets are blue. I was born pretty, what happened to you? I gotta say, it did feel out of place, but if they did more live action stuff that connected well, just a smidge more frequently, I wouldn't mind it. If you don't remember, there were live action scenes dating back to pre-movie, but this was Chef Bob. Ending off squirrel jokes, Spongebob comes backstage to a mysterious note. Upon reading it, it appears that Sandy learned to find the funny side of the jokes and invites Spongebob over. Could you imagine what would have happened if Spongebob was busy, for example? Luckily, the plan went in her favor. Well, as Spongebob comes over, Sandy Sandy looks, uh, different. She has flies around her and she looks a lot more, um, what's the right word? I don't want to get demonetized. Rural. Let's go with rural. Anyway, the way that I took this episode, and always have took this episode, is that in order to escape being labeled one way, to just be your stereotype and push it to the limit, to the point of harming others, which to me just doesn't make any sense. Are there flowers for me? You even done got me advice. <laughs> Ain't that hurt? Sandy, I need more! Oh, that's right! You the sea creator! Hasn't SpongeBob been that size before with no trouble? Why is it that when he's gaining water this time it's uncomfortable? Also, couldn't he have just taken the hose out anytime? Plus, what's the difference between this and SpongeBob going, you know what? I'll show you. Double down on the squirrel jokes. He could have easily been very upset because of this. But I guess it works because it was written to be that way. Like, I can't take this seriously because come on! Sandy isn't real really gonna kill Spongebob and he clearly understands. I'm not trying to get anyone to not like this episode if they do, like I said, I may be looking into this a little too deeply, but in all honesty, me typing this out is the closest explanation I can give as to why this episode makes me uncomfortable. Because trust me, even I want to know why. It's been like this for years, not just magically when I became a reviewer. It is the only episode where I've walked away as a kid and went, eh, I don't really want to see that episode again. It didn't bore me, it just did something that made me not want to watch it anymore. But let's finish this. Spongebob goes from just making squirrel jokes to plainly making jokes about everyone, including himself. The only thing dumber than a squirrel is a sponge. I mean, we're so dumb, we don't even have a vertebrae. Look at me. I got no bones. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. It ends with everyone happy because everyone is at the end of a joke. Again, there's just something about this that doesn't tell me that Sandy Andy isn't just going to continue being made fun of, ostracized, and isolated. Multiple episodes prove this to be so, it's not a fun episode, blah blah blah, and that was Squirrel Jokes. If you were to ask, Chef Bob did the concept much better than Squirrel Jokes, miles ahead, and I'm glad I didn't have to dedicate a singular negative review to just Squirrel Jokes, because as I see, the concept could work. Just look at Chef Bob. You could also bring up the hypocrisy of SpongeBob insulting the audience in Squirrel Jokes, but not liking it in Chef Bob. But honestly, it's different writers over a decade of time. I wouldn't sweat it. Anyway, what episode did you enjoy more? Make sure to vote in that poll in the card above. And let me know which episode you like better. Special thanks to the patrons of August. Social medias are in the description below, and I'll talk to you guys next time. Take care. Alpha out.